Hey everyone, Izumi Hongo is here with the hardest camera in the universe to get. People are taking out second mortgages, they're selling off their kids' possessions in order to get a hold of the Fujifilm X106. Personally, these are just gonna be my first impressions and I am quite impressed with this little camera. But don't fall for the hype and that's why we have to start off with the film simulations. They're a lot of fun, they're cool. And I can see why people fall for that. I am a sucker, so I fell for it too. And I think as you become more mature with your photography, you kind of want to do as little editing as possible. And the Fujifilm definitely caters to that. However, I think where many of us can get lost is, you know, what we're seeing on the screen is the best of the best of the best with Honor Sir, shout out to the fro. Don't let yourself think that every single photo you're gonna take is magically just gonna be like, wow, it's, it's like opening my third eye sort of situation because you're gonna have a lot of duds and I'm gonna show you some of my duds because I think it's important to show that but the camera will still make mistakes. You still gotta know those fundamentals, the composition, the lighting, the way we're playing with that, the aesthetic. I mean, people are always like, is this a film camera? Is it a film camera? Like, can I see it? Is it film? It appeals to a larger audience. And we have to definitely mention a few things. First and foremost, the black one looks the smexiest. Second, you will definitely leave this on so many times, the on and off button. I mean, I'll just slide it into my pocket and it'll turn on. The battery life for the short amount of time that I had it has lasted me about two to three days. And that's just on and off shooting, just everyday stuff, which is very, very impressive. The buttons, the old school buttons, they just add to that perception, to that feel of analog and it's really, really fun. One of the things I am not a fan of though is the ISO dial. So I think it's a little sensitive. I'm just worried about the wear and tear of the ISO ring as you just kind of have to pull it up to change the ISO. Then going on from there, we have to talk a little bit about the tilt screen. I personally think you either make a flippy screen or no screen whatsoever. The reason that I say that is because as I pull out the tilt screen, I can actually see the exposed ribbon of the camera. I, I just don't like that. It's a massive exposed ribbon. There's a massive hole in there. So if you take this to the beach, I probably wouldn't recommend using the tilt screen just because dirt can get in there. However, the screen is nice and bright. And if you look through the viewfinder, I mean, this is where a lot of those little nuggets that Fuji's like willing to explore with really comes in. I love this viewfinder. There's just the rangefinder in there. It's nice and colorful. Like you can see a lot of the detail, your preview, and it's so like, I wish more camera manufacturers were doing that. And it just kind of adds to making it easier for me to see the preview while not getting in the way. You can put so much data on there. You can put like your histograms, your meter. There's so much in there and it's very, very customizable. Speaking of customization, I was super impressed with how customizable each and every one of the buttons is. You could definitely kind of craft this camera to like your very being and there's absolutely so much room for, for exploration. The back right here, I wish that it wasn't so minimal. It gets into like Johnny Ive territory, if you know, you know, that it's too minimal. Like the D-pad would be nice here, a nice chunky D-pad. This little joystick, I don't like. Give me a nice solid, you know, beefy D-pad so it can be actually useful. Here I feel like I'm just kind of like always having to um, dig in with my thumb. Now going on to the lens, just like everybody else, I was kind of debating, should I get the Pro Mist filter, should I not? And I definitely think you should because we're trying to, again, sell, save ourselves some time in post-production. And it, I really like that there is this nice softness to each image, that's my personal style. By adding that and seeing just like a nice little bloom in the highlights, it kind of adds to that vibey feeling. But there is this little trick in case you can't afford the Pro Mist filter, which is you go into the settings and anytime you shoot the JPEGs, the clarity will be bumped down by two. So 
This in case you just kind of want to see what it looks like if you don't want to shell out the cash. The lens, it's a 35 millimeter equivalent. I'm a big fan of that. I'm a 35 millimeter hoe. So the, the 35 to me feels very, very natural. And it also fits into places that a big 35 millimeter just would not. So there's an advantage there. Also the ring uh, on the outside with these handles. I always personally found that a lot of the cameras, for some reason, I can't reach all the way here, like I'm here, and it's just like slightly too small. So th the handles on this are very well thought out. Then this camera is a leaf shutter, so it's very, very, it's absolutely quiet. And that's an aspect of the entire system that I really, really like. But I also was told that the leaf sound that it makes is actually synthetic. So you can go into the settings and modulate that, but it just adds to like this really nice, stealthy camera that packs a really big punch. The ND filter inside of this is also extremely useful. And someone that just loves to shoot wide open, I mean, it could be like the middle of the day on a freaking desert. I would still try to shoot F1.4. So the ND filter in here, which is four stops, I believe, and it comes back to having less gear because everything's already packed in here. I don't need an ND filter to be on the side. So I absolutely really like that Fujifilm is doing that. Personally, I think that the price is a bit steep, definitely. I don't know what they super did inside of here that would uh, ramp up the price, but I, I feel like when I was comparing the X100V to the six, um, Definitely the IBS was the only thing that a lot of people were excited about. So I have like no bias because I'm a Canon user. I've used Canon for my entire everything. I just decided to experiment with the Fujifilm system. And for my first reviews, the thing that I really wanted was, I was, was I having fun? Was the camera fun to use? Like, did it help me remove you know, the idea of like, I need an ND filter and I need the lighting to be like this and I need to like, oh, I can switch can I can switch lenses and I can start to see that it's fulfilling that role. I will give you my opinions in the vlogs coming soon, but let me know your thoughts, your opinions, you plan on grabbing it. I mean, it's such a difficult camera to get, but let me know what you think down below. There will be some affiliate links. Uh, to the ProMist and the camera. But as always, I thank you so much for your time and your attention. My name is Asmi Hongos. And remember, reality isn't made out of matter, but what matters. Bye-bye.